Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over some of my favorite video games of the past year. 2021 had a ton of releases, and I really didn't get a chance to play a lot of them. It was a much lighter year for me in terms of playing video games. It was a very busy year for college, a lot of stuff happening in my life, but I did manage to play five games that make this list. So today, we're gonna go through some of them. Most of them can be played on the Nintendo Switch. So if you're a Switch owner and if you're a Nintendo fan, which I assume most of you are on this channel, you've probably had a chance to play most of these. So we're gonna go through my list, and I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are some of your favorite games of the past year? With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, the first game I'm going to talk about on this list is Eastward. Eastward is an indie game that was published, I want to say, in September. It was published by Chucklefish. And essentially, this game follows two characters, Sam and John, as they go on their journey from the subterranean community that they live in to explore the outside world that many people who live in their town don't think is real and actually think doesn't exist. It's a, it's a conspiracy theory to even think that there's this brighter outside world. This game is in a gorgeous pixel art style and has some incredible action RPG elements with dungeon dungeon like areas for you to explore with your trusty frying pan that John uses to beat up enemies. Sam has her magical abilities that can assist you as you go about this story and it is an incredibly heartwarming tale of an of a man and a girl going on an adventure and trying to discover themselves and discover the world that they come from. If you have not played Eastward, I believe it is available on Steam as well as the Nintendo Switch, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I would highly recommend it. It is an incredible game. The music is incredible. The art style is incredible. And I don't want to spoil the story, but it has an incredibly satisfying conclusion and you can get a lot out of it. If you're a fan of Zelda likes or rogue likes, this game has a lot of those elements that you'll really enjoy with a really good story. Another game is actually one that I covered earlier in the year on the channel, and that is, of course, New Pokemon Snap. The first Pokemon Snap game in decades. There were so many consoles before the Switch that felt like they'd be perfect for a game like New Pokemon Snap. The Wii U specifically with the gamepad, you know, you look at it, you got a, a mini screen and your big TV screen. One can be used as a camera. It, it, it was perfect. It never happened, but we ended up getting new Pokemon Snap on the Switch. And if you're looking for a sequel to Pokemon Snap, I don't think you could have done better than what we got with new Pokemon Snap. With a ton of different areas to explore and a ton of replay value because the areas you've previously explored eventually change and you can find new Pokemon, new, new day and night environments, take new pictures. There's a mission structure, which allows you to go back and find different things. There's a bevy of courses to go on. And later in the year, they actually added some new stuff via free DLC. I believe if it was free. If it wasn't, please correct me in the comment section or I'll have a thing on screen. I think it was free. New Pokemon Snap was a really good addition to the Switch library and just goes to show you how many different types of Pokemon games are able to be played on the Switch now. You've got your core RPG games in Sword and Shield and BDSP. You've got your side games in Mystery Dungeon and New Pokemon Snap. You've got fighting games like T uh, Pokemon Tournament DX. There are tons of different options for Pokemon fans on the Switch now, which is amazing because I can recall a time in 2017 when the Switch first came out when there was a dialogue among Pokemon fans of essentially doubt as to how much support the Pokemon company would give this new console. It's a it's a it's a mainline console, it's a home console. Pokemon's a handheld game. We can't we can't bring something like this like Pokemon to to a big handheld. They're going to they're going to stay on 3DS for as long as possible. Well, they eventually moved, and they've moved with a fury. There are tons of Pokemon games on the Switch now. New Pokemon Snap, on top of having a really good mission structure and a ton of Pokemon to take pictures of, looks really good. Some of the action shots that you can get when you're on the on-rails portion of the game, seeing the different environments around you is gorgeous. Because it's not exactly an open-world experience, they can make the visuals that you see as good as possible. It's a really good time. The $60 price tag is going to hold some people back, but if you can find it for anything less and you don't want to spend that kind of money, I would highly recommend new Pokemon Snap if you don't already have it. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and, you know, hopefully enjoying them, aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe at any time. But if you do feel like subscribing and you want to see my content, also be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a new upload when I post, which is usually around 3.30 in the afternoon. 
With that being said, let's get right back into the list. Now, for my channel, the next game on this list knows no introduction. It is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I played through Pokemon Brilliant Diamond here on the channel last month. You guys really seem to enjoy those streams. It was a lot of fun playing it with you guys. And of course, for the months leading up to the game's release, we covered it extensively here on the channel. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are faithful remakes of Diamond and Pearl while weaving in a minimal amount of platinum content into the game and a couple new things that weren't already there. The art style at certain points looks absolutely gorgeous, while at other points looking pretty laughable. One thing that you can't get after this game for, however, is the in-game battle visuals and the music. When you're in battle, the backgrounds look gorgeous, the Pokemon look their best as these models have ever looked, and the music is fabulous. They did an incredible job remixing the original Sinnoh soundtrack to make it feel fresh and new on the Nintendo Switch. And of course, Sinnoh is a wonderful Pokemon region in its own right, with a great cast of characters, a great region to explore, and great Pokemon to catch along the way. Even though there are problems with this game, mainly the Pokedex and the fact that there was a lack of platinum content, which I'm going to get to in my eventual review, which is coming, I promise, I promise it'll be out hopefully soon. It's been a while. I apologize, but if you got Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I hope you've been enjoying it because I enjoyed playing. It's one of the most pleasant Pokemon experiences I've had in years, and it really brought me back to a time when I was a kid when playing through Pokemon was just something I would casually do. Now I do it, you know, for YouTube, and it's a great time, but it was a whole different world back when I was a kid, and to have some of that nostalgia really hit on with these remakes was really cool to see. And of course, caveats need to be made with BDSP. It is a $60 game. You are playing a game that originally came out for about $30 on the DS. So you got to make that calculation. But the visuals are an upgrade. The music is an upgrade and the battle animations look really good. And since this is a Pokemon channel, and of course, since I absolutely love Pokemon, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, specifically, you know, Brilliant Diamond, because that's the one I played, even though I am playing through Shining Pearl now, are on this list. So number two on my list is an interesting one. It's a it's a new game in a franchise that is long beloved by Nintendo fans and by people who played video games on the GameCube back when they were kids, and that is Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. I had never played a Super Monkey Ball game before this. I never owned one as a kid. I would always see it at other friends' houses, and I assume I'd played it at their houses whenever I would go over and hang out before this, but this was the first Super Monkey Ball game that I ever went ahead and purchased for myself. And it's incredibly addicting, and I didn't expect to sink so much time into it. I am happy to say that I am now a fan of Super Monkey Ball. One of my uh, one of my housemates actually owns some of the older Monkey Ball games for the GameCube, and when I go back up to college in a month, I am very much looking forward to playing some of them in our living room for the first time. This game is incredible. It has a great replay value, and one of the biggest highlights of this game is the fact that the main you know the main campaign isn't even really the highlight. There's a bunch of mini games that are also baked into this package, and they're honestly, at certain points, more fun than the main game. Now, of course, the main game is plenty fun, and going around all of these courses, and your little, your little monkey is a little ball with all the different characters that you can choose to play as, collecting all of the bananas, it is a ton of fun. Trying to complete the courses in as much time or as little time as possible, trying not to fall off the edges, manipulating the course with your controller in such a way that the monkey ball doesn't go too fast or doesn't go too slow. It's a really fun time. It's the type of game that when you come home after a busy day of school or work, you can just kind of lay out on the couch or in your bed in handheld and just play it mindlessly for like an hour or two hours and just you get a lot done but it doesn't take a lot to really sink your teeth into it and it's a really fun time the music is also great it gives me real arcade vibes like when you would go to a when an arcade is a kid with a bunch of quarters and you would lose every single time but the music sounded really good that's the kind of vibe that this game gives me so super monkey ball banana mania for switch specifically is the one i got makes my list higher than pokemon what am I becoming? <laughs> Coming in at number one on my list is a game that I didn't really cover on the channel extensively. I did post a reaction video around E3 when it was officially revealed. That is, of course, Metroid Dread, my game of the year for 2021. 
if you are a fan of classic 2D Metroid or even the Metroid Prime games, Metroid Dread was a glorious return to form for the franchise. With an incredible story, stunning visuals, and great atmospheric music, Metroid Dread did it all. It brought Samus back to a new audience and captivated the world with a brand new installment. The world of ZDR is incredible to explore, and as playing as Samus Aran, the gameplay is quick, it is fast paced, it is incredibly fun to control, and the exploration never becomes tiresome, and you really never get lost, even though the game does not hold your hand. You have the ability to explore this world to your heart's content and travel between the different sectors of the planet as you try to get back to your ship. And you're also dealing with the Chozo threat while you're playing through the game. The bosses are incredible and the replay value is amazing. I've seen so many people attempt to speedrun this game and attempt to get different scores and different uh, different times on it once they completed their first playthrough. Metroid Dread is a blast and it is an, a very, it's a tense game. Uh, when you're speaking about the ambiance of the world itself, it is tense. It is something that you're going to be on the edge of your seat for when you're experiencing it. The boss battles, as I mentioned before, are great. And one of the biggest benefits of the boss battles is that you're consistently learning new ways to go after these enemies. It's going to take trial and error for you to clear a lot of these bosses. But one of the things that Metroid Dread does really well is that it's never overly difficult. When you lose or get killed by a boss, you have this little thought in the back of your head like okay i know what i can do here i know how i can be better against this boss next time and that gives you the abilities to go back in and challenge it again and again until you defeat said boss now i know there are people because i've seen them on twitter who have not played metroid yet dread yet one because of the price people don't really see the value of spending 60 dollars on a 2d game but i can say if you are someone who even remotely thinks you're interested in this type of gameplay maybe try one of the earlier games on the wii u a ton of them are there on the eShop if you if you own a wii u um, and I would give Metroid Dread a shot. I think it's incredible. It is my game of the year for 2021, and I am incredibly excited to see what the future of the Metroid franchise holds. Also, that ending cutscene. Wow, <laughs> it was incredible. With that being said, that is my list of my favorite games of the 2021 year. I would love to know in the comments section, do you guys agree with my list? Do you have any different games of the year for yourself? What games almost made your list? I'd love to hear about everything down below. And of course, 2022 is coming and it's gonna be an even bigger year for games. We are a month away today from Pokemon Legends Arceus dropping. We have so many big games coming out next year. Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild 2, there's just, there's so much, uh, the new open world Kirby game, the new open world Sonic game, there is so much that we're gonna have to play next year and it's gonna be incredible to hopefully cover a lot of it on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. It shows me that you're really enjoying these videos and subscribe as I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed already. I cannot wait to experience the next year with you guys. This year has been incredible and I can't thank you guys enough for all of the support. That being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.